Donut, bring me the gun of Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> This is the M60. If you've ever seen Rambo or you know, know anything about Vietnam, you probably recognize this bad boy right off the bat. It is the belt-fed 308 light machine gun that the American military used to, well, fortunate sun intensifies. I know you've seen this bad boy on the channel before, but today it's time for its own standalone video. So let's get to it. You know, it just doesn't quite feel right. This is definitely the gun of Rambo, but I just don't feel like I've got the muscle to pull this gun off and do a really good intro. So I'm gonna borrow some of my friend Bill's. Think you can take it from here? Yes, sir. Let's go. All right. I like that. gotta get me one of these. Yeah, I would love to get you one. But, but the fucking ATF. What is up you sexy YouTube mother lovers? This right here is the motherfucking M60. It's very difficult to talk about this gun without Creedence Clearwater Revival blaring in the background, but I'm gonna try my best. This is without a doubt one of the most iconic belt-fed machine guns of all time. Not just because of its prominent use in Vietnam War movies, or you know, of course also <laughs> the Vietnam War, but also video games and a host of other things, not the least of which was Rambo. This M60 we have here is very much the M60 that was used in Rambo First Blood Part 1 when John Rambo lost his shit and started shooting at police. Anyhow, in a movie that was made to bring attention to how Vietnam veterans were being treated and PTSD and all that, uh, everybody just remembers the fucking M60. The M60 is also affectionately referred to as the pig. It's also one of my favorite belt-fed machine guns of all time, and in fact, out of all the machine guns that I own, this is probably one of the smoothest to shoot, and very reliable, oddly enough. <laughs> A lot of talk gets thrown around on the M60 on them being kind of finicky and whatnot, and I was really worried about that before I bought this one a long time ago. And uh, frankly, out of the thousands of rounds you put out of this thing, it's pretty goddamn reliable, which, thank fuck, there's so many cool machine guns you guys haven't seen on the channel because we're just trying to get them to fucking work. Small rant, machine guns are like in a constant state of being fucking broken, so like, we're working on, like, I know we've showed off like the dish guy and the Matri, it's, it's a fucking deal, man. And yeah, a little background on the M60, it was developed post-World War II in a 1952 for use by the American military. It takes quite a lot of design inspiration from things like the MG42. I will talk about that a bit later. But as long stroke as this kind of looks on the gas system, it is actually technically, I guess, a short stroke operated system. Belt fed 308 or 7.62 by 51 NATO with a relatively slow cyclic rate that gives it the, you know, kind of iconic chug, 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 chug kind of thing that the M60 has. I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. And the trees speak fucking Vietnamese. <laughs> So during World War II, uh, the, the go-to American light machine gun, I guess at the time, would have been the Browning Automatic Rifle, or the BAR. Very based. The only problem that the BAR had, well, I, okay, it, it had a few problems by modern standards. It was a heavy-ass light machine gun that had 20-round magazines, and 20-round magazines do not a good light machine gun make. Because when you're trying to lay down suppressing fire, 20-round uh, magazines sometimes don't cut it. So we moved to the M60, which is belt-fed. That's right, the U.S. military straight up took a page out of your stepdad's playbook and just gave it the belt. Fuck. ADD break. Will a 308 penetrate a white claw? The science is still out. So we're gonna give it a shot with the M60. Upsetting Jane Fonda in three, two, one. The second one was for good luck. Looks like that did a pretty good number on the, uh, the raspberry claw. I think this probably could have at least penetrated two or three more VC, uh, white claw. Hey, let me try that. Yeah, I'm sure. There you are. Not all of them. That was, we were gonna drink 
some of those. I'm sorry, dude. It's okay. Shit like this, I mean, kind of a miracle they ever took Ho Chi Minh City. So because this is a post 86 dealer sample machine gun, uh, the ATF will not allow civilians to buy shit like this, which fucking sucks. But when the apocalypse comes and or the US government inevitably collapses, you can absolutely buy one of these using silver and gold. This is a silver coin from our newest sponsor, American Heart for Gold, who is the largest retailer of gold and silver in the United States. They've delivered around $2 billion worth in gold and silver. Do you know how many fucking M60s you could buy with $2 billion? Silver doesn't really seem like a bad hedge to me. You see, the silver has always been worth something. The only thing that makes the US dollar worth something is the word of the United States federal government. Do you see the fucking problem? So with unprecedented inflation and a bunch of other things going on in the economy, I would not blame you for wanting to invest in a little bit of precious metals. Aside from, of course, the brass and lead we're all investing in. And American Hartford Gold has thousands of five star plus reviews. And on top of that, if you tell them that I sent you, they can give you up to $5,000 of free silver on your first order. So you can check them out using the links in the description or you can text Brandon to 65532. So we appreciate American Hartford we appreciate American Heart for Gold for sponsoring the channel. Back to the M60. So now we got a new target for the M60. So what we're gonna... Cody? Yeah! Were you behind that the whole time? Yeah. That's not good. What are you doing here? We lost the ranch. Yeah, that's why I'm here too. Do you want to come shoot an M60? Okay. Here you go, buddy. So we found out that this TV was grooming our kids. Oh, fuck no! Who's next? Ah, that's my line. <laughs> Ain't nothing left. I don't think that that TV is ever gonna play Lizzo again. <laughs> I, honestly, I think we could still sell that on Facebook Marketplace. Oh, no question. Yeah. So now let's talk about how to use the M60 if you ever find yourself acquiring one in the back of a military vehicle. Looking all submissive and breedable. So first off, uh, our charging handle is right here. Uh, we just pulled this to the rear and it stays back because the M60 fires from an open bolt. We're just gonna push that charging handle back forward, but the bolt stays to the rear. We have our rear sight here, which flips down and back up for storage and whatnot, and our front sight is fixed up here, this little blade up front. We have our bipod, which you just pull these down, and then they will pivot back like so. It's also loose as fuck, and you need to press this button in to retract them, which it's really fucking annoying sometimes, to be honest. Yeah, stay. This side here, we have our safety, which we have fire mode and safe down here, keeping it in fire because it's a fucking M60, of course. Now let's pop the top cover here. So in the rear here, we have this little thing here. We're just gonna twist that. And this is going to pop up like so. Here we have the guts of the gun. So you can see our feed tray here. We can lift that up and check the chamber if we so want to, but we have our bolt that's right in here. So if we're letting go of the trigger here, the bolt goes forward to the front to fire the weapon. And of course, when you pull it back, it then goes back and hangs in the rear, as long as the trigger is not depressed. If the trigger is depressed, it's just going to keep cycling the gun until you run out of ammo or Bill jams the fucking gun again. I'm just joking, of course, Bill's a friend and a very nice man. Don't hurt me. So anyway, moving the bolt back to the rear. Now you also see this little round roller here at the top of the bolt. What is this for? Well, so this rides in this track here uh, the, on the dust cover of the M60. And uh, it moving through the receiver is actually what advances the belt. So this track here is telling the machine gun at what time things need to be happening as far as feed and ejection goes. If this looks familiar, that's because it fucking should, because we stole this from the MG42. We just, we stole it. Luckily, I have my MG42 right here to show you. 
well, not quite an MG42 necessarily. Um, this is an MG3, so it's 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 a fucking MG42. It's the same operating mechanism. The parts are interchangeable. It's just this is the MG42 that Germany made after they joined NATO, so they converted it over to 308 instead of 8 millimeter Mauser. So I'm gonna hit this little paddle here in the rear, open up the gun, and wow, would you look at that? the same mechanism. America totally didn't copy Germany's homework on that shit. Honestly, this feed mechanism makes so much fucking sense for belt-fed machine guns that it is no wonder that pretty much every belt-fed machine gun since then uh, has in some way, shape, or form taken inspiration directly from this. This is top tier German BMW, very good uh, engineering. We have on the bolt the same roller, of course, that you know actuates all of this. So, so before that belt feed mechanism was killing Charlie, it was killing us and the French, so there is that. Bill, you gonna play a little Fruit Ninja? Why not? It's been a long time since I've done a little video game action. And I fucking miss. <laughs> Fuck! Big thanks again to our friend Bill Goldberg for lending us the range for this video and kind of helping us out and collaborating with us. Bill, if you're not familiar, is a famous professional wrestler, actor, Jew, and large cock owner. Tackle him. Yeah, you can uh, either tackle him or hit him over the head with that hammer. I'm gonna show you another really neat feature on the M60, cause you know, just weapon design and stuff like this. This really, you can see where this like gets me going, like it, it kind of gets the gears turning. Cause I just like to see all the different progression of, of just weaponry throughout the years and how, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. It's everything just, everything has an ancestor and there's so much inspiration. You can see the family trees of weapon design throughout history. And it's cool having so many different examples of that. It's really neat. And I just truly from the bottom of my heart hope that you know that if you ever wanted to get your start in gunsmithing and weapons technology, you can check out sdi.edu. We appreciate them being a sponsor of the channel. Didn't even see it coming. Links are down in the description, of course. As always, we appreciate their support. Anyway, moving on to one of my favorite uh, examples of just cool shit on this gun, real quick, actually, put that back down, is the barrel change. So you can actually just push this little lever here, and this swivels up. So it can't swivel up unless you push from the other side the swivels and unlocks the barrel. And luckily it gives us this nice big red warning no-no here that you shouldn't do that while you're firing because this assembly pops out of the front of the fucking gun. So here we have our M60 barrel assembly. So this is actually completely self-contained because we also kind of like the AR-15 does, uh, the barrel includes the barrel extension, which is where the locking lugs are. So when the bolt comes in here, it locks into the lugs here in the barrel extension on the M60 barrel, uh, meaning that you know, you're not having to time your barrel for head spacing every time you reinsert it. The timing and the head spacing is already predetermined within the barrel chamber and the uh, barrel extension here as well. So if you've been laying this shit on a little too thick, you can just swap out to a fresh new cold barrel, plop her down into your pig, Drop that down in like so, and you are ready to get back to killing. But Bill, hopefully you had a good time with this thing. Obviously had a good time. It was a wonderful time, man. Thanks for the invite. And don't forget to go to Goldberg's Garage and check out the content there. Absolutely, because we'll be seeing some of that stuff next week. Yes, sir. Hell yeah, looking forward to it, man. On it, thanks, sir. Absolutely, dude, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me over, man. It's cool being at Goldberg's Range. Goldberg's Range, Goldberg's Garage, Goldberg's Gym, hell, Goldberg's Pool, Goldberg's Kitchen here in a minute. Let's go eat. It's fucking hot. Let's go. Appreciate it, brother. Oh, yeah. And I'll see you sexy YouTube mother lovers in the next video. Thanks. Did you get, in the, get hit in the titty? Yeah, right in the The head. brass? This is the fun part that usually doesn't make it to the video, the, the cleanup after. It makes it in all of mine. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Sure. That was fun. It's not an air hit.